Castlevania Symphony of the Night is a game of mystery and intrigue. Castle is an ever-changing creature of chaos. Despite its grandeur, the castle is largely devoid of interesting characters, aside from those who directly advance the plot. Orlox is one exception, a humanoid widely accepted to be a vampire similar to Dracula. Orlox bucks the trend by residing in the center of the castle, an area that bears his name. Unlike other characters, or really just other creatures within the castle, he's more than just a mindless zombie wandering around trying to kill all who enter. Orlox has a personality, a backstory, a sinister one. In this video, we'll examine evidence that would definitely hold up in court, and better understand the dark past of Orlox and his associates. So, vampires within Castlevania have a clear lineage, including a son who bears a revised name or reversed name to their father. With this being the case, it's widely speculated that Orlox must have a son, and that son must have the name of Zorlo. Scholars have poured over the artifacts of the castle for some time, trying to find what must be there, and have recently made a shocking breakthrough. To understand the horror, we must have a greater understanding of Orlox himself. As a vampire in Castlevania, Orlox inherently has the ability to shapeshift, and we see this in the battle that takes place in his quarters. We can surmise that Orlox would have had or would have been keenly interested to ensure his son would have the same, if not better, proficiency in this dark art. Research suggests Zorlo was a great warrior, more on that in a moment, but we believe his father's pride required more. As Dracula is clearly the superior vampire, Orlok's desire to live his dreams of supremacy through his son, and thus, Orlok spent countless hours trying to further enhance Zorlo's shape-shifting abilities, potentially utilizing the castle's alchemy lab, or praying to the divine for power within the chapel. Against his better judgment, Zorlo allows his father to pursue his ambitions. Far be it for the son to redirect the father. Tragically for Zorlo, his father's work is a lesson in failure. The results are devastating. Instead of wielding incredible power, Zorlo is forever changed, never to be a humanoid again. Before we explore what Zorlo became, we need to understand this exact moment from Orlox's perspective. While inherently malevolent, Orlox has a certain grace and dignity about him. He understood that power is more than simple fire breathing and hulking strength. Orlox often paid particular attention to his reputation and honor. Orlox just witnessed the result of his shortcomings and his now shapeshifted son, and couldn't bear the indignation. His dream to live vicariously through Zorlo has failed, and now he needed to detail or need to deal with the consequences. Orlox acted quickly to hide his shame preventing others from discovering his ambition and the experiment had gone wrong. He had little time to hide the evidence. He quickly brought Zorlo to the basement underneath their living quarters. The quarters offers many spaces to leave someone and forget they exist throughout the jail, but Orlox didn't dare, stuff, or didn't dare try stuffing Zorlo in a cell for chance someone passed by the prison and investigate the inhabitants. So he quickly devised a plan to hide him within the ceiling in the cellar foyer. And with that, we come to the startling revelation. Orlox needed an extra step to keep his son from the world and cast him into a familiar card. Very few would understand what a familiar card was, let alone have the ability to use it. So he lay the shambling corpse of his son's now lifeless shell beside the altar and bound Zorlo's soul to the card. Zorlo is Swordbro. By taking the familiar form of a sword, Zorlo tapped into his warrior spirit, which leads to even more intrigue. It turns out that the clues to Zorlo's whereabouts were hiding in plain sight all along. At an earlier date, Zorlo, in his previous humanoid form, was immortalized in a gorgeous stained glass mosaic to bring awe from those who visit and to stroke the pride of his father. As Zorlo's soul was bound to the familiar card, he took the physical embodiment of his chosen tool to forever be a living weapon, ironic as Zorlo's goal, or Orox's goal for Zorlo, was essentially the same. So we solved the mystery of Zorlo, but what but there's a price or there's a piece still missing. What of Zorlo's mother? She clearly needed to exist, but where is she? We look no further than the stained glass. Not only do we find the mother, but it's revealed there are two sisters as well. 
The Orlox's pride in his sons beaming from the top, and the love for his wife and daughters below. It is here we see a stark contrast between Orlox and Dracula, with the King of Vampires family resenting some kind of trinity for probably no particular importance or metaphorical illustration at all, and the multi-pronged lineage of Orlox. But what happened to his wife and daughters? How could he hide the truth from them? While Orlox was effective with spinning lies and deceit, it was only a matter of time before they learned the truth. They raged and belittled Orlox for his Icarus-like ambition, and doing this to their brother, their son, Zorlo. For Orlox, his life was being torn apart, and his callous mind couldn't take it. In frustration and anger, Orlox quickly shapeshifted his wife and daughters into spectral swords. Orlox thought if they loved Zorlo so much, they could join him in some kind of twisted way. Deciding to put his spiteful family to good use, his daughters, now mindless, are tasked to defend the entrances to his quarters, one to defend the now barred entrance from the chapel, the other near the crossroads from the Colosseum in the clockroom. Lastly, banishing his wife far away, to the torment of the inverted castle's anti-chapel, for daring to oppose him. So it comes to little surprise that Zorlo, as the sword card, gladly assists Alucard in his quest. United in their shared anger towards their fathers, they both set out to avenge their mothers and put an end to their cursed bloodline. That's all this time. While I don't know who started the Zorlo speculation, a special thanks to Major Seaman for suggesting a Zorlo and Sorbro connection. If you enjoyed this completely factual examination, there's a like button at the bottom of your screen. That's all for this time. Take care.